The Swan Gans catheter, or pulmonary artery catheter, is an important procedure that used to define the practice of critical care medicine. It's used much less now in the era of echocardiography, but remains an important procedure for measuring right heart pressures and a few other applications. In this video, we'll demonstrate the insertion of an introducer and Swan Gans catheter. Please note the patient has a known history of pulmonary hypertension and needs pulmonary artery pressures measured for liver transplant evaluation. He is spontaneously breathing. The patient is already positioned in drape, so we need to prepare the cable and freeze insertion site. As with any procedure, it's always good practice to make sure you set out all your equipment to make sure you have everything you need and you've walked through the procedure in your head. The Swan Gans catheter requires a 7.5 French introducer with a locking cap, or alternatively, you can use a MAC catheter. The introducer kit that we will use as shown contains a needle, wire, introducer, dilator, and sheath. Notice that the dilator is inserted through the introducer. Under ultrasound guidance, the right subclavian is cannulated and the introducer is inserted using the Seldinger technique.
Once the introducer is in place, the dilator and wire are removed at the same time as shown here. Now the swan is prepared for insertion. A basic swan has a port for inflating the balloon, a proximal port, and a disco port. The red and white connector is for the thermistor. You can see in the swan that there are markings to indicate the depth of insertion. Each single line is 10 centimeters, and a thick line is 50 centimeters. When the balloon's inflated, the blood flow will guide the catheter into the pulmonary artery, resulting in its eventual wedge. To inflate the balloon, use this syringe included. The syringe port is a locking mechanism to keep air in the balloon while floating the swan. While the lines are aligned, the port is open and the balloon can be inflated or deflated. Once the balloon is inflated, the port can be locked to keep the air in. To prevent the air of keeping the balloon inflated when not needed, it is a good idea to leave the balloon port unlocked and the syringe disconnected. Before inserting the swan, you need to protect it with the sheet. The sheet allows you to manipulate the swan and refloat it if necessary later. By the way, in case you are ever wondering, the official name for the sheath is the swandom. Insert the swan to the sheath so that locking is in the distal end. Then secure the proximal end between 80 to 90 centimeters using the included tape. The next step is to attach the pressure transducers and flush the catheter with your assistance help. The blue port is attached to the CVP or blue line, and the yellow port is attached to the PA or yellow line. Be careful, it's a common error to reverse these two lines. Then you'll need to flush all these ports.
The distal port, or PA port, is at the tip of the catheter after the balloon. The proximal port, or CVP port, is at the 30 centimeter mark. Finally, we can insert the swan dance catheter. Insert the catheter 20 centimeters before attaching the sheath to the introducer, and then have your assistant inflate the balloon. In general, 50 centimeters is the furthest distance needed, and you should be careful advancing beyond this point. Once the balloon's inflated, quickly advance the swan as you watch the monitor. You will see a series of different waveforms. This is the CVP waveform, or the central venous pressure waveform, which you can see immediately upon insertion. As you advance the catheter, you'll come to the right ventricle. The systolic pressure here is much higher, and the diastolic pressure is low. Once in the pulmonary artery, the waveform changes again, with the systolic pressure remaining about the same, but the diastolic pressure rising. Inside the pulmonary artery, you should slow down. When the balloon occludes the pulmonary artery, the catheter is now wedged. If you go too fast or push too hard, you can over wedge the catheter. You will know when you have wedged the catheter when the waveform changes from a pulmonary artery to a lower pressure waveform that looks much more similar to a CVP. You should never leave the balloon inflated for too long. Deflate the balloon and you'll see a return in the pulmonary artery waveform. Before you finish, you need to confirm that you're not too far. Ideally, your catheter should be positioned 
that when you inflate the balloon, complete wedge does not occur immediately, but takes a second as the balloon pulls the catheter into the wedge position. Watch the amount of force you need to use to inflate the balloon with the syringe. If you're getting a wedge while you're still inflating the balloon, then you should immediately pull the catheter back. Lastly, you need an x-ray to confirm that the catheter is not inserted too far. Although the Swan Dance catheter is used much less frequently these days in critical care, it is still an important asset, particularly in patients with select conditions such as elevated right heart pressures. I'd suggest you take any opportunity to learn this in your training and understand the, the core principles underlying it. Even if you not, do not have the opportunity to insert the catheter on first pass yourself, you should get the opportunity to practice floating the Swan Dance catheter and watching the waveforms as they progress. Bye for now!